Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be styling up a nifty pricing page that you could use for whatever you're selling. So here I have, uh, we're going to be using like three cards to display the prices and what features go along with each package. So we'll have a free package, which I have the HTML markup for right here. And we'll have three cards, so we'll have the free package and we'll have a basic package and we'll say maybe that's ten dollars and we'll have a go button then instead of yeah and we'll have a premium package and that might be uh, twenty dollars we'll say okay go for premium all right so this is what it looks like, the HTML. And we'll take a look at the styles right now. It's pretty basic. I have a colors file here that I just defined some colors in. Background color, foreground color, a color for shadows, gray, green, and blue. And then for our root element, which is the HTML element, uh, we set a font family using Source Sans Pro, which I imported at the top here and sent the font size and colors. So let's take a look back at our structure here. We have a header that says pricing and choose the package for you. And then the main element that contains all three of our cards. So let's get started with some styling of the header. And by the way, I'm using SAS here, SCSS syntax. So we'll start with the header. And inside the header, we have header one elements and header two elements. Um, those show up here. And so I'm going to style these by saying text align center and font weight inherit. There we go. Those are centered. And now I'm going to center these cards by using a flexbox. So main is the element that contains our cards and I'm going to say display flex and flex direction is row that's the default but it's kind of nice to be explicit sometimes and I'll say align items yeah, center and justify content also center there we go now those are centered as well and Let's see, the header contains this paragraph element, and we can have that align center as well. Um, so I'll just say that there. Awesome. All right, now let's get to styling these cards. So I'll style the class card, and I'll say a width of I'll do it in M so uh, 15M that looks good and then a margin of 1M uh, maybe 2 no 1 should be okay because I have a 24 pixel uh, font size so even 1M might be too much actually then I'm going to give the header a background color of gray just to start off with and I'm gonna give this a border radius of three pixel whoops three pixels and a back oh no not there a um, overflow of hidden like that Okay, now the border radius isn't showing up there quite yet because these header elements have margin. So I'm going to say margin zero. There. Now oh, that cleaned up nicely. Okay, let's continue on. I'm going to actually add padding to these and say uh, maybe 1M. There we go. I guess 1M is too much. 
There, that looks nice. And let's continue on. Um, I'm gonna give the card a background color of white so that it stands out a little bit from this just barely off-white background color that I have for the rest of the document. So we'll continue on here, say color white here in the header. So that changes there, looks good. And let's move on to styling these lists. So I have an unordered list uh, that contains the features. I'm gonna say list style type square margin um, 1M. Maybe a little bit more left and right, so 2M. Okay, that looks good. And finally, on to the bottom here. You'll notice that I have a div with the class of price that contains the price, and then a link instead of a button, um, because chances are when you click this, it would take you to a separate page as opposed to executing a page-specific action like a button would. So let's come here, say footer. We have price and the link. I'm going to start by styling the link. And we'll say background color is gray, color white text decoration, none. Okay, that looks highly boring. But let's move on a little bit here to the footer and we'll have this set to display flex as well and say flex direction column. So this will make them stretch. It'll make this button stretch across the whole bottom, which is exactly what I want because then we'll add some padding, maybe just a half M of padding. Refresh, looks good. And we'll say text align center. Great, I'm gonna add some margin to margin like that. Oh yeah, and we should add some border radius. Border radius, uh, three pixels. If I can type right, three pixels. Yep, that's what we're using up there. And there, now it's nice and rounded. And finally, let's move on to styling this price here. So for the price, we'll say font size, um, maybe 2M, and margin uh, 0.5M. Note that setting the font size here is actually going to change the value of this M um, here, so I have to make it smaller than I would think. Also, text align center there. Maybe even half an M is too much there. All right, that looks good. Now, let's move on to making these have more exciting colors. We'll leave the free one um, boring colored, so I'll give that a class name of gray. This next one, why don't we call, say, green for this one, and then the last one will be blue like so. So now I'm going to separate out some of the styles here into a mix-in that'll generate the colors, just the colors for us. Because all the cards are going to have the same like structural, um, more structural styles, they'll just have different colors. So I'm going to make a mix-in mix -in called card color. And that'll take a color, like so. And now I'm just going to copy all of these. And we'll filter out the color styles, because those are the only ones that we're interested in, uh, not the background color here. We're interested in that background color. 
basically any time we reference the color gray is what I'm interested in. All right. So it looks like this is what we're going to have. Let's dedent that a little bit. Okay, so color right there and color. Awesome. So now I can delete those styles here and here. And actually, we will include the base mix in, which will be for the gray color style here. So include um, card color gray. So the gray class is actually going to be um, superfluous. That's okay for now. And then down here, we'll say also for the green one, um, include uh, card color for the green color. And then for blue, same thing. Nice, now we have pretty colors. One more quick thing I'm going to do is add a click style to these buttons. So I'll come over here and say A, oh wait, and active like this. Background color, um, darken color by 10%. Um, Put comma there, I think. Nice. Okay, and I'll add a transition. Background color, um, 0 0.1 seconds linear, because why not? There. Beautiful. Now, we'll get into the fun stuff. Let's add this nifty property here called perspective of 1000 pixels, which is the pretty standard perspective. If we come back over here, we have zero visible change. But what this is going to allow us to do is transform these elements in three dimensional space and it'll give us, it, it'll um, skew them correctly for us. So it'll give us a really neat effect. Now to augment the effect, I'm also going to add some box shadows. We'll say box shadow, zero, zero, no offsets, um, 10 pixels or maybe 15 pixels. And the color is the shadow color. And we'll have a similar rule here for this link except maybe only blur it um, eight pixels. All right, there, now we have shadows. It's already looking a little bit 3D-ish. Um, but we're gonna add some transforms to these cards. Now I'm gonna separate these from the green and blue classes because, um, well, they reference different things, green, make this the green card, blue, make this the blue card. Now I'm going to style them based on where they're located. So first child, the first card, okay, the last child, and the one in the middle, which is going to be nth child two. So we have the first one, the second one, and the last one. And finally, we'll add a hover style as well for the cards. So for the first child, I'm going to say transform translate late Z negative 20 pixels. Now let's just quick save and take a look at what this does. We're styling this one, so watch what happens when I refresh. It kind of just gets smaller as if we had used the scale transform, but it's actually transforming it in the 3D, uh, the Z axis, which 
it's simulating as if the element was getting farther away from us, which is uh, the 20 pixels. If I instead changed it to positive 20 pixels, it would get bigger like that. And now it's bigger than these other elements by a little bit. So I'm going to change it back to negative 20 pixels. And then I'm also going to rotate on the y-axis uh, negative 3 degrees. I believe that's the correct value. There. Now this uh, card is ever so slightly tilted so it's pointed to the left. I can make the effect more extreme if I change this to maybe 13 pixels. You'll really be able to tell. But um, for now, we're going to leave it at 3 degrees, so it's just a little more subtle. And then we'll add the similar style to the last child, except we want to rotate it positive 3 degrees so that they're kind of facing uh, outwards. This one's facing to the right, this one's facing to the left. And then this basic one, I suppose we can probably just leave it how it is. Then, actually, I'm going to transform form it, but in a different way. I'm going to translate Z and bring it forward maybe 10 pixels. Oh, a typo. There, now it grew just a little bit. Say maybe this was the one that your company wanted to promote, like this is uh, most loved or most popular or something like that, and you really wanted to promote this one, so you would make it bigger. Put it in the center. Finally, on hover, we'll trans transform it by translate Z to uh, spectacular 30 pixels and no rotation on the Y axis. And then we'll animate that as well, so we'll add a transition, transform, uh, 0 0.15 seconds, and we'll make that ease out. Now if I mouse over it, it grows a little bit bigger, and these ones really pop out when you mouse over. All right, everybody, there you go. That is how you make a pretty nifty pricing page in SAS. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. My name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.